please join me in welcoming to the show today, Jake Woodard. I'm so excited. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Long well, time no see. <laughs> I know. So I've been thinking so hard if, from when I started the podcast, I've been thinking, I gotta have Jake on the show, but I don't know what I want to talk about. And then finally, just the other day, it came to me that what is something that I can't speak about fully? You know, like what is something that I, I understand, but I want a deeper understanding of. And it just came to me. It's the masculine core energy, like having that masculine energy at your core. And on the show, we have talked about both masculine and feminine energies, but I think it's important that we dive a little deeper in there. And I think you're the perfect person to bring in. Now on my Instagram story, I asked all of you to give me questions, things you've been curious about, things you really wanna know about the masculine energy, that divine masculine energy, because I mean, I get to witness it firsthand, which I feel really grateful for, but it's that confident presence and the beauty that you bring to every space. You know, it's gentle, but it's strong. And I think that a lot of people really want a better understanding of what that looks like. And I, like I said, I think you're the perfect person. So I'm happy to have you here. Thank you so much to everyone for all your questions. This is called 20 Questions with a Divine Masculine Man. But we got so many questions that it could have been called thousand questions with a divine masculine man. So again, thank you to everyone who submitted your questions. I looked through each and every one of them and I tried to kind of combine some of them together and I hope you're open to play 20 questions with us today. Let's do it. <laughs> well, let's get right down to it. First things first is I feel like we all should start with the same foundation. And for those of you listening that maybe don't know about the masculine and feminine energies or you're not super familiar, can you just give us a breakdown of what each one looks like? So when most people hear the word masculine, they think male, which mm -hmm. is, you know, what I thought for a long time and feminine means female. But then as I started discovering these sacred energies, I realized that we all carry the essence of both of these energies within us regardless of our gender. So I think it's really important to first understand to take this through a lens of realizing that you have both of these energies, masculine and feminine. When it comes to the masculine energy, it has been very distorted within our world, meaning that it's like this wounded patriarchal masculine grid that we've been kind of brought into. And it's very dominant, it's very repressive, and we're gonna talk more about this, but basically, most of us, if not all of us, have been exposed to a lot of toxic masculine energy. So my work here is to really help balance and harmonize those masculine and feminine energies within all people. Because the more you balance these yin and yang energies within yourself, the more harmony you will have in the outer world. It's like a reflection back to you. So when it comes to masculine energy, I'm going to talk all about what these are and everything, feminine energy. When it comes to masculine energy, I explain it very simple. It's just like this. Masculine energy is like the present consciousness that is never changing, never wavering. Feminine energy is the flowing, the life force of the universe. And that's really how they complement each other so well. Because if you think about it like a, a riverbed, which would be like the masculine energy and the flowing of the water would be the feminine energy. And they complement each other so well. So in divine union between two people, it could be man and a man, woman and a woman, or a man and a woman. In our case, it's a man and a woman, mm -hmm. where you have someone with more of a divine masculine core and someone with more of a divine feminine core. You create polarity between these two energy fields, and you can create such a beautiful dynamic and dance between these two energies. And when you say polarity, what do you mean necessarily? arc of attraction okay so you think about polarity means like an electrical charge so basically between every single cell in your body you have a positive and negative charge that gives you life force that allows you to live without that positive negative charge that arcing of electricity between those energies you would not have anything you have neutrality in the sense of masculine and feminine, if there's no arcing of electricity, then you have neutrality and there's no attraction between the two energies sexually. Same thing, and, and that's in a romantic sense, mm -hmm. but same thing within our world. You have a north and a south pole. And between those two poles, the yin and the yang, if that's what you will, you have this arc of electrical field that creates the movement and the balance of the energies. 
Okay, guys, so you hear that? So you got the feminine energy, the masculine energy. It lives within us. And it's all about finding the balance, but it's important to also discover your core energy because we predominantly carry one or the other. Is that right? For the most part, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So now we got the groundwork. Now we're understanding what we're talking about. Let's just jump into the questions because <laughs> I feel like we have so much to talk about. I don't know how long this I'm is going to go. I'm already sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was going to say get comfortable because we got a lot of yeah. awesome questions. Uh, so m I, And I also let me say that I think it's really beautiful that so many people want to learn about yeah. this energy. Because for me, you brought this into my experience and it completely changed the way I saw every relationship I had. I mean, it's been helpful within us, like being aware of what energy someone's bringing in. Then you know how to like balance it. You know how to like, how to approach someone. And it's just, it's life changing. So we'll talk so much more about that. So let's dive into the questions. What do you say? Let's do you it. ready? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think is the biggest difference between the way that a little boy is raised and the way that a little girl is raised and how can that affect confusion in your core energy? Mm. So I think a lot of people experience like an underdevelopment of one energy or the other. So for example, if a man grows up in a household with all women and predominantly feminine women and they have more feminine energy, he may take on more of a feminine essence and he may think that he has a feminine core, but maybe he actually just underdeveloped his masculine because he's never been shown healthy masculine energy and how to create structure in his life with the healthy masculine. Same thing with the opposite of a woman. Maybe she was raised with all brothers mm -hmm. and around a lot of masculine energy in her life and she thinks, well, my core is masculine. And maybe as a young girl, she's a tomboy growing up. And there's nothing wrong with any of this either. It's just really about discovering your true essence. Maybe she has a very a lot of masculine energy growing up, and now as she grows older, she gets into you know sports and she grows into this this corporate world, which is very masculine. And now she's like, I can't make relationships work. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna talk more about why that is, but I think that the way in which back to the original question, the way in which a boy is raised versus the way in which a girl is raised, I think that girls are raised in a way that is kind of more like predicated around the feeling of you need to be a certain way you need to look a certain way and i think a lot of girls get shamed for the way they look you know you look at barbie dolls and they're so like perfect you know like you go into any store that sells barbie dolls and you see like these perfectly modeled little little barbies so you get these little girls that want to look like these barbie dolls and put all the makeup on and everything like that so they they're very shamed on the way they look. Whereas men or boys in this case, cause they haven't become men yet. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference. Believe me, I've gone through this initiation phase. Boys are really taught to not show any emotions for the most part. And when they're shown, when they show emotions, if they have a toxic father, like I did, then they often get repressed with their emotions. So you have the girls really trying to be validated externally with all, you know, makeup and everything else, really trying to go out in the world and be seen, which a lot of the wounded feminine ends up being shamed around the way they look and they carry this inner shame and they, they really want to look a certain way. And I hear a lot of stories around the women that I work with, like, I was never good enough for my mom with the way I looked. Mm -hmm. Like I always had to be dressed up going out. I had the perfect makeup on, the perfect dress and everything and had to like look perfect. So they carry a lot of shame for the way that they look, their image. Where the masculine, with a lot of men that I hear and work with is they carry a lot of anger and resentment because they've built up all this toxicity with not being able to express their emotions in a safe way. And I think that what you don't express, you repress energetically. So the boy is raised in an environment where he's taught don't express any emotions because that's weakness. That means you're a little baby mm -hmm. or you even get called or you're a little girl, you know, like don't be a little girl. Right. Yeah. You know? You're like a girl. You're yeah. Like so a they girl. shame it. They shame boys. And they, they say you're acting like a girl, like there's something wrong, you know, with like being a girl. Mm -hmm. But then the girls, they're shamed for the way they look, you know. So I think that there's a lot of very early on wounding that begins a lot of programming that begins right in the early development of the childhood it, it actually begins energetically in the womb of the mother so for example if that mother is carrying a lot of fear with her because she's in a toxic relationship and 
she's fighting with the partner, the, the baby's dad or whatever. She's fighting with the dad. She's carrying that vibration of fear and injecting that baby with that. So that that's even before the baby comes out of the womb, mm -hmm. you know? So I think it's really important for the listeners right now to take a look at your conditioning, what you've been conditioned to believe around vulnerability, around emotions, around expression. What type of relationship did you have to the image of your body and the shame that you carry because there's a lot of stuff around that as well as you're speaking about it i'm like visualizing this box and it's like here you're a little girl you fit in this box here you're a little boy you fit in this box and i remember oh gosh it must have been around christmas time i put up just a quick little story i remember on like my social media and i was like walking down the aisles of the toys in a toy store it's crazy different it's like all the little girl aisles are like bright and they have like housekeeping stuff and baby dolls and it's pink and purple and rainbows and unicorns. And then you walk down the little boy aisle, it's like guns and knives and violence and punching. And it is just like, this is the way that we think it ought to be. So it's a beautiful thing that you're reminding everyone to just take a look at what your truth really is, because a lot of things you're taught when you, as you grow and you learn about yourself, if you choose that path to take that journey to, to discover your own belief system, you'll realize that a lot of things you've been taught don't line up with who you are, you know, who that soul is, what you want to bring out into the world. Right. So it's like that box that we all try to, we try to fit each other in it as adults too sometimes. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're a doctor, so you can't act like that. Or you're a coach, so you can't have any problems. You know, like you run into that. Do you feel like you run into that often? Yeah. Absolutely. I think that we all have models of the world and how we think it should be. And we get triggered when someone else isn't fitting that model mm. on our model on what we've been taught, how we should be. But a lot of the conditioning that we've had is outside projections. And we've modeled our mommy or our daddy, first people that we model. And then we start modeling coaches or teachers or we worship celebrities and how they live their lives. And right. You know, it just, the conditioning goes on and on and on. And that's where you have to start stripping away the layers and really ask yourself, who am I? That's a, such a tough question. I remember, I'll just share a little bit of uh, inside info. When Jake and I first started, you know, seeing each other and dating, I remember he asked me that. And every time he asked me that, my whole body just tensed up because I was like, crap, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And for a while it wasn't, I don't know. And I don't know. And I don't know. And, and just having that like loving support of like, we'll figure it out, you know, like, all right, well, how long is, I don't know going to be your answer. And I, and I share that all the time. It's like, you can answer, I don't know for quite some time, but then you got to step up and, and then asking the hard questions really forces you to dig in and understand yourself so much better. And, and then ultimately discover your core energy in the process as you learn about what feels right to your body and etc but all right we're gonna be here for a long time <laughs> yeah we better start ripping through these and be here for like six days i know oh whatever <laughs> <laughs> all right so what is the most common wounded masculine trait and like that of do you think what's the most common wounded masculine trait and how can someone begin to shift out of it I think the most conded, common, conded, <laughs> common <laughs> sure. wounded masculine trait, I would say, I mean, there's so many of them, mm -hmm. but I think control mm -hmm. is a big thing. Like a lot of wounded masculine energy, they want control so bad. And, you know, you look at why we go to war, the need to control another, co another country, mm -hmm. you know? So you think about, I think so many things are rooted in control. Like, why do you tell someone else how to live their life? That's your own control. That's your own wounded programming, your own wounded mask on energy wanting to take control over another person or another country or think about the things in your life that you're trying to control and how much you suffer when you try to control things outside of yourself. So when we tr truly learn, so the second part of this is how do we heal that is mm -hmm. to surrender, to give up that control outside of ourselves. The only thing you kind of have control over is yourself you know, and what you're doing and the decisions you're making and how you're acting and how you're showing up. That's really the only thing you can control. So when you catch yourself in this state of woundedness, trying to control people, trying to control situations, trying to control outcomes, having these expectations, it's all coming from your own seeds of control that have been deeply planted in you. And I think the more you give up that control, you free yourself from that suffering. So for you, 
how do you, how do you do, what did that look like for you? I suppose like when you're going through different healings or you're trying to surrender to what is and, and do that, that great work and that hard work, what's something that worked for you? Like what kind of tactics or what did you do, you know, personally that like really helped you shift? I think just practice, you know, just practice and awareness of, wow, like I see how much I'm suffering right now because of how much I want something to be a certain way and it's not fitting that model of how I think it should be. So when I give that up and just let it go, I'm like, I stop suffering, yeah. you know? So like, I think it should be a certain way, but it's not. So I'm either going to choose to continue to try to force it to be a certain way, which is not in the natural flow of the universe or which is a very wounded masculine trait is forceful. Mm. And when I give that up, when I let that go of how I think it should be and my model of how it really should be and all my righteousness and I'm really sitting with that, I realize how much suffering I'm creating in myself because I'm not in the rhythm of the universe, the flow of the universe. So I just, I tune my vibration so carefully and just self-reflect and realize like, wow, I'm creating a lot of hell in my life because I'm trying to control things outside of myself. You know, if I don't like something that my mother does and I'm like really hard on her about it, I'm creating suffering within myself and I'm creating suffering for her. So I think that we all have controlling tendencies and how we think things should be. But the more you pull back and you peel those layers of conditioning and programming back, because that's really just your ego, you stop that kind of need for control the need for control is one of the greatest reasons people suffer mm, i can't i feel like it hits right because it's like <clears throat> it's just kind of like i don't want to say a light switch but it's like we judge like so quickly like why are they doing that yeah. why is she doing that i don't like that they did that you know instead of just being like all right you're being who you're being and i'm being who i'm being and it's just try to find the goodness in it you know or try to find the lessons in it especially that was that's been a big one for me is like my first reaction is to be like kind of like freak you know and then I stop and I'm like okay I'm learning something here okay what's the lesson here and then I think you're able to like move through it a little quicker yeah but where did you learn that from I guess like for me it's like listening reading but no, actually, I'm saying where did you learn the first reaction is to freak from like oh probably my my family yeah yeah my mom is was a worrier yeah so it's like yeah, well you you uh, do what you see, you know, even if it's super unconscious. Mm. So I think like really getting real and raw and honest with yourself has something that's been help been helpful for me and just being like, I can I imagine it as like, you know, you're talking about the river and I often times say that I envision a lot of us in our life that there's this natural current of like the flow of our life and we're going the opposite direction and we're like, why does this feel so hard? Why am I so tired? Why am I so stressed out? Well, you're actually going in the opposite direction that the universe is like trying to be like, hey, come this way. It's a little easier if you just lay back. So like when yeah. you say that, I envision like, you know, just laying back and just like letting things just be and and you know, allowing the universe, God, source, whomever you choose to name it, um, to just let you or guide you through it, you know, because my something my dad, he has these isms, you know, and when, one of the things he used to always say was if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it, mm -hmm. you know, so it just that that's one of those things that circulates my mind all the time. Yeah. Surrender is probably has been one of the most beautiful words that I've learned throughout this. It's very hard. Yeah. Surrender is a beautiful practice. It's very difficult because the ego is so needing for control. The ego's hooks are so deep in us and in the mind. You know, once you start to peel back those layers and you start to see like your ego and all of its games, the constant clinging for control and judgment and comparison and, and all this stuff, you come into your soul essence, but you have to do the shadow work in order to get into that place of giving up control and surrendering. Mm -hmm. And it is such a hard freaking practice. Like I have been multiple times on my knees, like in various locations, middle of desert, middle of woods, like by myself, drop down, just like crying hysterically. And I was full blown surrender. Like I was, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like I was just, I was doing what I was guided to do. And when I started to give up that control and just like, 
like saying to the universe, take this pain away from me, take this pain away from me. I don't want to suffer anymore. When I started doing that, I activated this sacred healing within myself. And at the time I had, once again, I had no idea what I was doing. Nobody told me to do this stuff. I was just following what I felt guided to do because we all have this inner guidance system. We can call it the soul. We can call it the divine energy within us. We all have that inner compass. We've been through this life many times. We just have to remember. You just have to remember. The more you remember your soul's essence, you start to remember the truth of how it all is. When you start to surrender and you give up your ego control and all the stuff that comes along with your mind, you begin to free yourself from this trap of this system, of this matrix that we live in. Mm. Oh, true. It's true, I feel. And I can feel it in, in just the way you're speaking. And I think that that's something that I admire so much about you is that you, this is that all the things you teach are all the things that you've done yourself, you know, like, like they say, you walk the walk, you talk the talk. So when you speak, it transfers so much more um, in a powerful manner because you've seen it happen. You have felt it. You've done it yourself, you know, and I think anyone who is looking to transform their life or help others or anything like it's super important that you really, um, you know, dive into the practices yourself. And that's what I, I mean, I try to do it as well because then it's like, it's like you're trying to sell a product you've never used, you know, so you're like, Hey, buy this. And like, well, why? I'd be like, well, I don't know. Yeah. It looks like it might work. It's like you're telling somebody how great peanut butter is. You never even had it. Exactly. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but I, but it's just, it's the way you convey the message is it's the deep belief because you've been there, you've seen it. And I just, again, like, I love you. I admire it so much. I appreciate it's that. It's beautiful. I think we're in an age of information, but we, the soul craves wisdom. Mm. I think that too many people have too much access to too much information and they overload their mind with more stuff, more junk. And the true practice comes from the embodiment. And I only teach what I've embodied myself. And if I hadn't embodied, I can't teach it. Because when I first got into all this work, it was a lot of book stuff, a lot of other people's projections. Mm -hmm. And until you go through it yourself, until you go into the depths of your shadows of yourself, you can't really teach it. Because you're not teaching from a place of your truth. You're teaching from a place of someone else's truth. Right. And you think that's allowed you to really step into that masculine, that divine masculine energy. Yeah, I, I feel so. I feel that really working with it and really navigating through my pain and my trauma and my shadows, like I think really like charting those waters, like those shark infested waters, <laughs> I felt like allow myself to forgive, allow myself to let go, allow myself to surrender, allow myself to just feel you know, feel my hurt, feel my feelings. And just as uncomfortable as it is, especially for a man with all this conditioning around emotions and everything else, allowing myself to really feel that and bring it up and release it has been so transformational for me in my life. And I want to share that with anybody right now, that if you, if you're holding on to something, that pain that you carry, it's not yours. It's not yours to carry. So give it up. Give up that anger. Give up that shame. Give up that fear that you carry because it's not even yours in the first place. Mm. Put down what you're carrying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't agree more, actually. So now that you have, you know, really begun, I mean, for a long time now, like to embody that. There's a lot of bonus questions, by the way. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're well, never going to get through these 20 <laughs> questions. Jake always likes to joke around with me and be like, are you still talking? <laughs> I'm like, did I lose you? Am I doing because the masculine always wants to bring everything to an end. The feminine just wants to keep the flowing of everything. And I know when it feels good, I just don't want it to end. I guess I would say. And and for a masculine, it's like, all right, good, awesome, great, yeah. the end. It's interesting. So, but now that you have really, But now that you have been able to rest more in the divine masculine energy and recognize it, what fulfills that? What, what makes it feel good? I mean, there's a lot of things, honestly, but I think that the, the masculine feeling of freedom and liberation is like what fulfills the masculine, like the sense of freedom. Like I think the masculine, what drives masculine energy 
is this the feeling of being free it's like mm. being liberated being liberated from suffering being enlightened like liberating yourself from your ego you know so like the the masculine is always on a mission like it's it has a mission here right and i think a lot of people like want purpose they want to have feel like they're they're anchored into something deeper than just their own ego i think that anchoring into your divine masculine this is for women too it's not just men Anchoring into that masculine energy will give you a sense of like, I'm here for something bigger just than just myself. I'm here to serve. I'm here to be on a mission. I'm here to have purpose. I'm here to have to create freedom within my life and with other people's lives. I'm here to bring liberation and enlightenment to this planet. And I think that the masculine is very freedom focused, very freedom focused. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, so I think it's all about bringing things to an end and creating a feeling of like, it's almost like a feeling of nothingness. You know, and it's almost like it's beyond feeling because it's just masculine energy is the present consciousness. It is is the unwavering eternal present moment. So as the closer we get to that, the more we get closer to that feeling of just pure nothingness, because in the in the realm of nothingness, there's no suffering. Mm. There's no attachment, which attachment creates all suffering. You know, so I think that with me and my masculine essence, what brings me true fulfillment is really the idea and the feeling of liberation and creating liberation within myself and within within the other beings of this world and being the purest vibrational soul that I can be to help others become free. Because the more I free myself and the less trapped I am, the more I can offer to other people. Right. All right. So let's go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Two <How>? hours later. <laughs> Come on, Jake. <laughs> I'm trying. It's just, it's interesting, you know, and, and I love having conversations with you and I enjoy having you around. I mean, I should, you know. We're, we're going to be having a sleepover <laughs> yeah. in the studio yeah, here. I Come know. on. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so how does a divine masculine man call in a divine feminine partner? Ooh, Facebook marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jake likes to joke around about that. Oh, oh no. I met Melissa on Facebook marketplace. No, so I did it. It was, it was very close to Facebook marketplace, but um, yeah. So what's the question? How do I, how, do, how, how does a divine masculine man call, call in, in a divine feminine exactly. partner? So we go back to the idea of polarity. Mm -hmm. And I think that, the more you tune yourself into who you are at your core, like what you really are. So if you're a divine feminine goddess and you want to attract a divine masculine man, like if that's what you want, then the more you anchor yourself into that, the more you will polarize that opposite energy to you. You know, like that old saying, opposites attract. Yes. I think that it's electrical attraction. It's, it's vibrational attraction. So when we are in our divine masculine, we're going to attract the polar opposite. Remember the electrical charge is like positive and negative to us. So we're, we're, we're bringing that into our vortex through anchoring into the divine masculine or divine feminine within us. So once again, if you're a divine feminine person, you know, that's your core energy. And I have a whole quiz on this 15 question quiz that you can take. Yes. But, um, you know, if that's your core energy and you want a divine masculine man, or divine masculine woman, because I think that was a question. It was, how do you call a divine masculine woman? Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, partner, yeah, woman. Wh whatever. Yeah, whatever. I think that the more you anchor into your true energy and the more you really like you clear out the feminine wounds, you clear out the masculine wounds and you're really in your in your truth of your essence of who you are and what you stand for, why you're here. You really are clear on that. You will call a partner into your life that will mirror back the qualities of yourself you know, the loving aspects of yourself and also the shadow aspects of yourself. So the more work you've done on yourself, the less shadows you're going to see in your relationship and you're still going to deal with them. You know, in all relationships, it takes work. And I think a conscious relationship, a divine union is about creating harmony between the masculine and feminine energies. But when you have harmony between your own masculine and feminine energies, you can have that in a physical manifestation in the form. So for a man, in order to connect to a feminine woman, you've had to have connected the woman within you, the feminine parts of yourself. And if you have it, how could you possibly understand the feminine form? Mm -hmm. You you wouldn't be able to understand it. You know, if I if I told you right now, I'm like, speak Japanese to me. You're like, I can't speak Japanese. Right. 
the feminine energy is a different language. The masculine energy is a different language. And you have to know how to communicate to that energy because if you don't, you can't call it in. You can't, you can't catch that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, if you don't know how to catch a certain type of fish when you're out fishing and you're using the wrong lure, like you're not going to, you're not going to grab, you're not going to bring that fish to you, you know? So like, talking the language of the feminine is so much different than what the wounded patriarchal man thinks. Right. And here's a little bonus tip. <laughs> the feminine is connected to everything feeling. Okay. So if you're a divine masculine man and you're connected, you're wanting to connect to a feminine woman, you have to realize that she feels everything in this universe, every subtle vibration of everything. So if you say one slick comment that really hurts her or even you're just even joking around is too harsh because you're being too direct with your masculine energy, she's going to shut down over time. She'll start to shut down. Eventually, her heart will close. So it's important to be able to speak the language of the feminine energy, the softness, the subtleness, the gentleness, and you bring to her that feeling of safety. Because when she feels safe, her heart will start to open. Her natural masculine shields will start to come down. Because, you know, a lot of people carry these masculine shields. So it's important that we understand the feeling and the sensation and the vulnerability of the feminine energy. You know, it's it's a lot different than what the masculine energy is. The masculine energy is a little more rigid, a little more structured, a kind of a little more intense, if you will. It can take a little bit more of a of a kind of a beating, you know. And mm -hmm. I am saying this in very like literal terms, but the feminine energy does doesn't want to feel that harshness. Okay, so it's important that we understand to give the depth of our presence, the depth of our consciousness as a masculine person. And the more that we do that, the more that her feminine energy will open up and her radiance will open to you. Would you say that? So if the, you another have, bonus question here, if you have a. <laughs> Calling me out? <laughs> You're sparking, um, you know, like yeah, jump yeah. question. I'm Whatever. Just with you. All right. So what I'm saying is, so would you say that a a man who is a you know a masculine man who wants to call in a feminine woman and, and perhaps he does do that, it's a practice, you know, to maintain that polarity between the two. But if he can't really get down in the depths or he hasn't discovered how, would you say that naturally that feminine woman would begin to emulate or animate her own masculine energy and then that's where they would kind of like butt heads yeah i think if she doesn't feel safe and she's like i don't trust this fool like who who the hell is this guy right. you know like maybe at first like he's very courting he's very leading and like he's like he seems like a a safe masculine energy but then like all of a sudden his wounds start to come up and he's almost like a wolf in sheep clothing right you know so i think it's really important that we are aware of our own energies. And if we get in this type of relationship and we notice our shield starts coming up because we don't feel safe anymore, then create a dialogue between you and your partner and communicate to them. Just say, listen, like I feel really guarded. I feel really rigid. I don't feel like I can trust you. I don't feel like your masculine integrity is here. And maybe it's because he's lacking purpose in his life. Maybe he's at a period in his life right now where he's very indecisive. He's not really leading a lot. He doesn't know how to lead and he's not really grounded. He's not really present. And the feminine is starting to say, what's going on here? Why is he wavering? Mm -hmm. And as soon as the masculine starts to waver, she goes, I can't trust this energy. And believe me, there's already so much around this. All you need to do is just give a little indication that she can't trust you and she's going to immediately go right back to that and and that's where the the problems lie so i think when you have the two masculines clashing you'll lose that sexual attraction in the relationship and then there's no more that polarity that arc of attraction that really like i want you kind of feeling you know and and that's what happens a lot of times i feel like we all crave that whether we pretend that we don't yeah we all really want that and it can work both ways right so if the um the feminine like kind of has that masculine shield up and can, and can repel her male partner or, you know, her more masculine partner. D did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, so it goes back and forth. I just think it's incredibly interesting. Um, well, this is actually a great question to go off of what we were just talking about. Is it unhealthy for a masculine, for a masculine man to be too emotional or vulnerable with his partner? Like, do you, do you find that to be, it can bring up issues? Well, I think that if he starts being overly emotional with his partner, it's almost like he's looking at her as like a mother, 
-hmm. you know, and like, just go get a therapist or work with a life coach, work with a healer. Like, it's important that you do not allow or project onto your partner to be your therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, don't look to your partner to be your motherly partner and coddle you. Like you're a man, you're a masculine man, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Stop looking to your partner to be held and coddled. Not to say that she can't do that from time to time because she absolutely can. Divine feminine woman is amazing with nurturing. That's what she, that's what she's best at. You know, like she's amazing. She's a soft, gentle, loving space. Like that's what a feminine woman is. But so is the masculine. The masculine also has a different type of way of holding space and creating a safe container. But I think it's really important to not become so emotionally imbalanced in the relationship because if you do that, you're really in your feminine energy and she's going to start animating her masculine energy as a way of protection, as a way of providing, as a way of leading. She'll start to take on these leadership roles and she may start to close down her feminine heart. So if you're going through an emotional stage of your life, that's that's pretty common with healing. Like mm -hmm. the, the feminine energy is like your inner healer, as I often say. So go do your own shadow work. Be very clear with her. Like, this is what I'm going through right now. I'm going to figure this out on my own. I, I don't need you to figure it out for me. Like, be very clear with this dialogue. Ask for space. You know, go do your work. You can do that work in a relationship, but I would say to not project onto her all of your stuff because if you start getting really emotional, angry, whatever you're going through, don't bring that into the space. You know, of course, time to time, you're going to have these type of things going on, especially if it's between you directly, but have a dialogue. But what about for a woman if she notices that maybe you know, her man or her masculine partner is getting in an emotional stage or like they really are like stepping into their healing. How can she show up? I know this was one of the questions, which is why I'm just going to ask it now. Yeah. How can she show up in a way that doesn't turn her into the mother figure? Yeah, I think do not try to fix him because, and if we're talking about a man, you know, this could be a woman, ma there's masculine women as well, right. but we'll use him as a context for masculine and, and her as a context for feminine right now. But I think that, what works best is to give him space to process his, his stuff because if you start to try to fix him or figure it out for him and you become the problem solver you're taking on the masculine role so give him the space if he's truly masculine he loves to problem solve like masculine people love to fix things they love to problem solve they like to complete things and if you start to do that for him you'll actually start to emasculate him so it's really important that you don't strip away his masculinity because he's in a vulnerable stage if he's there, right? And you could easily overpower his masculine energy with your own, if, especially if you're more grounded, you know? So it's important that you don't emasculate him. Let him figure his stuff out. He'll work through it. And, you know, that, let, let it go from there. You don't need to figure it out for him. Something big that I want to share about our relationship is something that I learned within, you know, us getting to know each other and, and kind of like utilizing the energies and kind of embodying, you know, you primarily being in your divine masculine often and me feeling way more comfortable in my divine feminine energy is that um, receiving and giving. So I think what happens is we look at relationships as like we want equality, but there's a different type of equality here. It's mutual respect and you know you care about one another you love one another you take care of one another in in ways that you need to or you want to show up but I think that trying to like what you give me at first I thought I had to give you that and maybe more you know I had to give exactly what you were giving yeah. back and forth so like resting at me being in a, a feminine energy having that be my core I had to learn to receive more than I gave. And for me, that was uncomfortable because that was something that I've never done. And I was like, am I being a taker in this relationship? But realistically, you kept saying to me, it makes me feel good to help you or it makes me feel good to give to you. Just say yes, just say thank you, just let me help you. Because, and you said it earlier before, it's like, I'm taking away your masculinity, but like, I got it, I can do it. You know, yeah. all us women, oh, we want to be independent and there's beauty in all of that. But there's, but real, really, really, let's be honest. Almost every woman that I've talked to who has been like, I'm an independent woman, which I was myself and still am in a way we really don't want to make every decision. We really don't want to have to lead everyone because it, it is exhausting. And so I would invite anyone listening that feels like they have that feminine core and you have that longing to be led. You have to actually let yourself not be the leader. You actually have to back up and be like, okay, you can lead me anywhere, you know? 
Maybe not anywhere, but <laughs> Well, you know what I if mean. If you if you trust if you trust his masculine energy, absolutely allow him to lead. Mm-hmm. But if you don't trust him, don't let him lead. Uh, yes, that's true. That's a great point. Yeah. Because And don't don't be with him. You want to be safe. <laughs> I was going to say if you don't feel safe yeah. in your relationship, then you don't have a lot in my opinion cuz yeah. No. For sure. All right. We're going. We're going. <laughs> Why are so many men, oh, I love this one. Why are so many men never able to break away from their deep sexual desires and truly become conscious? I would say that they haven't integrated their sexual energy. They haven't integrated it into their heart chakra and they're still locked in the lower chakras. So I think that the more that men integrate their sexual energy and they stop giving it out everywhere you know just <laughs> or we could get into all that but it's i think that you could become more conscious about who you choose to share your sexual energy with i'm not going to tell you what to do with your sex life any of that stuff i think i would just invite you to be more conscious of who you're sharing your sexual energy with because it really is a divine act and you know i think you know, we as men were conditioned to believe like, you know, go get a bunch of chicks and have a bunch of chicks under your belt. And like, that's what we're taught. We're thinking that's really cool. But I think that the more you anchor into your divine masculine energy, you don't really care to be go spreading yourself out with a bunch of women all around the world. And and if that's your thing, great. But what I've learned from my experience and my truth is like committing and focusing on one person in, in, in the relationship can be very beautiful because you can grow so much with that person. I feel like true safety can come from that relationship when you're focused on the one thing, which is the masculine energy is commitment to one thing. And there's nothing wrong with like going and having multiple sexual partners. If that's what you desire, go do it. You may find that that's not my truth. So I think that the reason back to this question is men just haven't integrated their sexual energy and they're still projecting a lot of their lustful energy into the world Things like pornography is huge. I mean, I started watching pornography at 11 years old, you know, so I think that the more we integrate the the sexual energy, we bring it up the chakra system into our heart, we can bring more love into this world because when you're not spreading out and your seed all over the world, you know, like (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's life isn't just about having sex and Mm -hmm. and ejaculating. There's more to life than that. that. That's very primal. It's very ego based you know and and that need of chasing and fulfilling the ego desires to feel that little sensation of of ejaculating like all orgasms are the same right you know so stop using women's body just to masturbate transcend that and go deeper can you go deeper do you have any depth or are, are you too weak to go into the shadows and really embrace your consciousness well where would that start for a man what learning how to move that that sexual those sexual desires you know because i'm gonna i'll ask you because i don't want to just like assume but i feel that sexual energy is very different within a man and a woman like a lot of women look at a man and they're very confused why he feels the need Mm. to have multiple partners when she just wants to feel that love between them and is like well just control yourself but i think that is different Mm. we have different sensations in that way or we have a different desire system would you say that do you feel that way too yeah i think redirecting the impulses i think starting something small like maybe giving up pornography, mm-hmm. you know, just trying that. Say, I'm, I'm not going to watch porn anymore. I'm, I'm going to stop just ejaculating randomly and just, you know, masturbating randomly. Start small with like subtle little things like that and see if you can start to bring that lustful feeling up and breathing it up. Say you see a woman that really triggers you and you're like, oh my gosh, she's so hot. Like I just, I just want to have sex right? and I just want to have sex with her. So instead of like actually going and physically acting out that act, like, you know, a lot of men would try to do, breathe the energy up, just breathe into it, feel the feminine essence of what you would feel and just breathe the energy up into your heart and give it back out into the world as like a divine gift. Like now you've just redirected and rechanneled and refocused all of that energy. And now you're giving that energy back out into the world Mm -hmm. as a gift, as like a gift of divine energy. So you just took it, you transmitted it, transmuted it from a lower desire system that would have done no good for anybody. Basically, you know, (laughs) you might've felt good for a minute of like, or satisfaction, 
but I think true fulfillment is really in the, the giving of your masculine gift as a masculine person. So like bringing the energy, redirecting, rechanneling and shifting in that vibration more to love and not lust. So the more we come into like this collective love and we transmute those denser frequencies of lust because a lot of that lustful stuff, it wears you out. So as you bring that up and you bring it into your heart space and you, you're really vibrating in this frequency of love, you can really help to heal the collective energy. Do you think it has anything to do with like validation, like having validation that you can, um, like you can get that person to have sex with you or you can get them to want you? Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. To, I mean, everybody wants to be desired. You know, right. So I think it's about like, oh, I got that hot chick and like you're telling all your boys about it and you feel so cool, but like no one really actually cares, like, <laughs> you know? So like, I mean, I get it. Like everybody wants to feel that sense of validation, but I just, I, I went down that path. Like you don't find fulfillment in that. You know, right. I think that fulfillment really comes from, from rooting in a relationship with one person. If we're talking about romantic relationships, you can find fulfillment in other things, but I'm talking about in a romantic sense with a sexual intimate partner being committed to one person and focused on that relationship and seeing what you can bring into that relationship and see where you could take that relationship to is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, lo I actually love what you said about pornography because I think that so many don't realize like what a huge addiction yeah. pornography really is. Like there's so much going on in the world right now where all like the child sex trafficking is coming forward. And even that, like even those pictures and those videos, like people have addiction to watching that. So I because it's the purity of the childlike innocence that the wounded masculine is trying to trying to capture. Right. So it's not this thing where like, oh, guys watch porn. Like there's actually like deeper stuff. Oh, it's very dark. Within all of that. Yeah. yeah. I I'm grateful that it's a it's coming out to light and and people are actually like awakening up to it or or waking waking up yeah. to it. Yeah. But that's true because I women it just being a woman and i can only speak from my perspective is like i don't fully understand pornography i just it's never been something i've gotten into you know like you know here and there it's it's whatever but it's such a different experience for a man so i i mean thank you for speaking about it because i think it's truly like very important and a lot of people shy away from really well, yeah, no one wants to talk about that stuff. Yeah, but it's important <laughs> because it's something that people kind of like, they silently suffer with. Yeah. And it's like, it's they're a, ashamed it's a real of it. Thing. And yeah. 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 It's, it's, it can be very dark. All right, let's roll. <laughs> let's roll because we're going, we're going so Jake, but you're, you're just, you're dropping so much that like it's, it's clicking things in me to want to ask you more questions. All right. Let's click to the next question. <laughs> Can I, there he is <laughs> leading me. <laughs> okay. Can a person be in their divine masculine? Can they carry that presence, but not necessarily be a spiritual person? Yes. Can absolutely. they be totally unaware that they're carrying this divine I think masculine? Energy? One of my, one of my best friends, you know, I feel like he really embodies like the divine masculine energy and he doesn't talk about any of this stuff. Okay. I think it's just like, like I think about like a lion. You know, would you go up to a lion and be like, you wonder, like, does that thing you wonder about if it's a lion? Right. No, it's just, it's a lion. It knows it's a lion. It doesn't question if it's a lion. So I think when you're truly rooted in like the divine masculine energy, like you don't walk around being like, oh, I'm a divine masculine man. Like, no, you just are, right. you know, like that's your ego talking. If that's, you know, what you're saying, it's like, like, I don't ever say those words. I never say like, I'm a divine masculine man. It just sounds so ignorant. Yeah. You know, it's just like, so I think that absolutely. Yes. I think that there are a lot of men in this world that really do embody divine masculine energy. They may not be super spiritual or like, you know, have all this lingo or whatever, but there are some men that really just embody it and just are it. Like when you are it, you don't need to talk about it, you know? And like, actually I believe it was your father that said, the more you talk about it, the less you have it. Right. You know? So I think that truthfully, yeah, there's some, there's some men in this world that really do embody it. And I think that embodying it is a lot better than knowing it. Cause there's a lot of things that I knew for a very long time, but I didn't embody. And until I truly embodied the wisdom, it didn't matter. Right. And that's know? when life really changes is when yeah. you actually practice what you've learned. Cause it's hard. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of imposters out there trying to, you know, look the certain part and, mm -hmm. you know, but I think all that stuff fades away and, the divine feminine can kind of cut through that stuff and she can feel it with her intuition and she's like sharp and she mm -hmm. can cut through like that 
that fakeness. See, guys, you know. Yeah. Deep down when you when and I know you get this question, too, like, you know, I don't know about my relationship. How do I know if it's right? And it's like, well, you probably wouldn't be asking that question if you felt that way. Yeah. You know, if you if you something that Jake has said from the beginning of us knowing each other is if you don't know, then, you know, yeah. and every time he said it, I'm like, darn it, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, and it's true. If you And don't sometimes know. you just got to sit with things, too, you know, because like. Sometimes it's not always super clear for people. Sometimes things need to take time to unfold. And, you know, it's like maybe you need to suffer some more or maybe you need to experience like, wow, I actually really do appreciate this person and like the relationship that we have. And I'm just coming from a place of my own wounds. So I think that really being with yourself and feeling into what you're what you're trying to process. But like, I think intuitively you do know you just really got to really honor what you feel. Mm-hmm. And fear probably comes up, I would assume, in well, like moments yeah, like that. That's in you naturally. <laughs> I know. So if someone is working hard at trying to embody more of their divine masculine energy, what would you suggest is a good thing to do if they if they feel triggered? Because um, like you said before, a lot of times like the wounded masculine energy can be really angry and and, you know, act out and want control and, and want to put everything back together. But like, what would you say is a good thing to do if you feel triggered in, in different moments, whether it's in partnership or just in life? Yeah, I mean, I think this is for all all beings is is to breathe mm. and it's something so simple. But like, if you can truly just bring yourself back into center when you find yourself being triggered, don't react. Don't get caught up in other people's ego drama. Like just bring yourself back to center, close your eyes and just breathe, breathe into your heart and just breathe into the moment. Bring yourself back into the present moment and just feel that eternal consciousness. Feel your, feel the groundedness, feel the connection, feel your anchor being sent down into the mother, into mother earth. And just allowing this emotion to pass, allowing these feelings to pass you because emotions, anger is an emotion. It's going to flow through you. Just let it flow through you. Don't act on that emotion. Don't act on that horniness or anger or shame. Don't act on those things. Stop acting on your emotions. That's coming from a place of being wounded. Start acting from your truth. And one of the questions that I love to ask myself is, is this my, my wounded projections or is this my truth? And just simply asking yourself like that, a lot of the times it's really just your wounded projections of how you think things should be. Right. So transcend that, you know, go in, breathe, slow down, get back into the present moment. Mm-hmm. I think that I, I, I keep saying I agree because we do actually like that's probably why we have come together in this life is because we have similar feelings on these types of things and like breath work. But like really being in that moment and like really breathing deeply is is so much more powerful. And you're right when you say it just sounds really simple because like what's someone be like, sit here. OK, breathe. OK, breathe. You're OK. But in all reality, like it, it's so helpful. Like it can it can change any moment when you're like in the moment, you drop out of that mind space. And like you really do concentrate on your breath. It's a beautiful practice. Why are you smiling at me like that? I'm just observing. all right let's see okay good one do you have relationship tips for a straight man who has more of a feminine core and so this gentleman um said that he took your quiz Mm -hmm. so you guys at the end of the show we're going to talk all about this jake has this amazing quiz i think there's like is it 10 or 15 questions? 15, yeah. Okay. So, and it helps you identify what your core energy really is. And it's, I mean, a hundred percent spot on. I, I got, I got mostly feminine, but like a little bit more of a balance, which I feel feels right to me. Um, but this gentleman said that he got a nine out of 10 or, or a, a nine score. Sorry, excuse me. So what would you say as far as like relationships go? If he has a more feminine core, he believes he has a more feminine core. Yeah, well, I mean, I would first challenge you to to think is that is that really your core essence or you just have underdeveloped masculine? Because I think a lot of times maybe people think that like I have a feminine core like and maybe you do and that's totally fine as well, but like I would first say is that your truth? Do you really have a feminine core or did you grow up in a household with all the women and you were really feminine growing up and you just never really 
nurtured and developed your divine masculine energy. So that'd be the first thing I would say. If you do have a feminine core as a man, the next question is, are you okay with being with a woman who is more masculine that is going to want to lead and protect and structure and kind of be like the pillar in the relationship? Because I mean, not to say that you can't be that as a feminine person, but the masculine person is going to want to problem solve. They're going to want to fix things. They're going to want to be like the strength of the relationship, like the almost like the, the steadiness, the stillness in the relationship. So are you okay with that? And if you're not okay with the masculine person in the relationship leading, then maybe you don't really actually have a feminine core. You might actually have more of a masculine core if you want to be the leader in the relationship. So I think it's really important to truly identify your core. And if it is feminine, then the question is, are you willing to step into that nature to really feel and feel the flow of the vibrations of the universe and bring that expression to life, the life force and all of these intuitive feelings and really bring this forward as the feminine in you. But remember, it's really important also to develop your masculine energy as well and to have that container of masculine energy. So having a healthy relationship with both of your energies will call to you a person with also that has healthy energies as well. But remember, you're going to attract someone an energetic opposite. So whether that's, if you're a feminine, you're saying you have a feminine core, you're going to attract more of a masculine partner. If that's a masculine woman or a masculine man, a man and a man in a relationship, a woman and a woman, it doesn't matter. It's, it's energies. So being aware of your energy and how it's showing up in relationship and when you have that polarity between you is really key to having that. Do you think that someone can actually have like a really like balance, like a real 50 50, or do you think that they're just kind of like haven't really fallen into either one? Yeah, I, I do. I think that it's more rare. I would say maybe like 10 to 20% of people have like a 50 50. I don't ever believe it's really 50 50. I yeah. think it's more like a, like a 49 51. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't feel like everyone truly has a perfectly balanced. I've never seen it. Maybe someone does, but like I think it's very rare. You think like you'll lean either way. Yeah, and I think that even if you do have a balanced core, you're going to you're going to attract someone more of a balanced core, but in order to have that polarity, sexual polarity and not feel like you're totally like neutral and no attraction to your partner, you're going to have a masculine and a feminine in the relationship to create that arcing of attraction. Yeah. All right. So let's move right along. Let's see what this one is. As a feminine core woman, I have learned that it's important for me to allow my masculine partner to lead me. But what's the difference between being receptive to my to my masculine man or or sorry, what's the difference between being receptive to a masculine man versus being repressed by a masculine man? Mm -hmm. So I think receptive being receptive to his masculine gifts feels good versus being repressed, you don't feel safe. Okay. That's, so, a good, that's a really good answer. Yeah, I think that if, you, if you're receptive, it feels good and it feels right. It feels natural. But if you're repressed, you feel small. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're not seen, you're not heard, you're not loved, like whatever. So I think that's more, that's more like wounded masculine. So I feel it's important to speak up in those moments Yeah, where, where you just say, hey, that doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, have, have boundaries. Like, and I think that the reason why she's asking this question is probably because she feels repressed. Right. So you don't feel safe and you need to communicate that. And if you continue to not feel safe, I would invite you to leave that relationship. Yeah, because if Jake asks something of me that doesn't feel right, I have to stand in my truth. And I, and I always say um, when you're in your feminine core or you have a feminine core, use the word feel more than think. I don't think I like that. I, I feel like that has like a competitive nature to it with a masculine yeah. person where I say, I don't feel aligned with that. That doesn't feel right to me. I don't feel safe with you asking me to do that because just because you're allowing a masculine person to be more of the leader doesn't mean that they lead you to the bridge and tell you to jump off and right. you say, oh, okay. You know, yeah, I you got to use your intuition. Right. That was a great answer to that. Thank you. And I agree with you. It's like when you feel like, am I being repressed? I feel like if that crosses your mind, you might just be. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel natural. All right. So this one says, if my husband and I are both feminine core, is there a way I can cope with that? Is there a way I can cope with that? I do not like that word, mm. cope. 
it just it doesn't feel right to me like a coping mechanism it sounds to me like you're settling mm. like in all honesty like is there a way i can cope with that i, I don't know it, it doesn't sit well with me that word cope because it's like can i de- how do i deal with this would be like how i if feel you both it. have a feminine core i mean if that's really the case i mean you're probably gonna clash energy fields a lot i mean it's just there's not really a lot around that it's like if two masks when people are in a relationship together there's there's going to be some clashing of energy fields at time for it's going to be a power struggle at times and who's the leader here kind of thing and mm-hmm. if you're in you're both in your feminine it's going to be like well who's more emotional you know it's like there's no there's no safety there's no structure to ground down that feminine energy which is the mask and helps to anchor the feminine energy i, I can i consider the the mask energy like an anchor where the feminine energy is kind of like a hot air balloon and like that's how they work so ah, well like but that. when that cord is cut that f- that feminine becomes very flighty and the masculine has nothing to give to you know it doesn't have a, anything to anchor to anymore so it's just like that's why they work so well together so if you're both feminine feminine what's holding down the yeah. fort what's the masculine anchor in the relationship mm-hmm. and that's really what you got to ask yourself is this what i want is this my truth do I want just a feminine man? Because if you if you don't want to be with a feminine man and that's not what you want, but you've attracted that, then maybe you're coming more into your feminine essence than maybe when you attracted that person, you were in your masculine, which is fine. But in order for there to be sexual polarity, I'll go back to this true and true. It's masculine, feminine energies between two people. So if you both have feminine energy, you may be best friends. You may be able to chat. You know, it's like <laughs> right. you just sit no there decisions. and chat. Yeah, no decisions are going to be made. Like no one's going to be leading, you know. Because I'm with like one of my girlfriends and primarily most of my girlfriends have a feminine core. We just, you know, come yeah. together in that way and we sit there and talk. Can't figure out where we want to go to eat. We're yeah. just like, what, so what do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And we literally sit there and go in circles. And I'm yeah. like, gosh. This is, we're, I'm annoying myself, but I can't figure it out. Because the feminine doesn't want to make decisions. Mm-hmm. She, she, does, she can make decisions. And I'm saying she could be a man as well. Yeah. She can make decisions because she has masculine energy mm-hmm. as well. But she doesn't want to. Right. You know, she would rather just feel the flow of the conversation talking about where they could go to dinner, you know? <laughs> so it's like she gets more fulfillment out of that than the actual act of eating dinner. So it's like she doesn't want to decide because she doesn't want to bring it to an end. But the masculine energy in people is like, all right, next question. Right. You know, it's like keep they it moving. Like exactly what's happening. You right know, here. like they want yeah. it's a constant beginning and ending, the beginning and ending where the, the feminine is like the constant flow of life force and everything. You know, and I think that's where when two people in their feminine energy get really wrapped up in an argument, like they're both like in a feminine and they're like really expressing their emotions and like, oh, well, you said this and they're going back and forth. There's no ending. There's no end there because no one's in their mask on. As soon as step, someone steps into the mask on, they become still, they slow down, they become present. It's like, okay, I'm not going to continue this argument. And that's why I think when we talk about, which I've, I've actually done an episode on this, like choosing a, the role you want to play before you jump into a relationship. Yeah. Because if you want to call someone in, you have to kind of have an understanding. But what would you say? I mean, you kind of answered it in a way. I'm just more curious about what would you say to someone who's like literally in a marriage and they're like, hey, um, we're like best friends. Like I love them, but like I'm not attracted. I mean, you find that happening all the time. And like it's interesting what you said is like, well, maybe when you met them, you were in your mask and but like now – you've been following Jake Woodard and you're like, Hey, I think I'm actually divine feminine. And like, I'm going to try to rest in my feminine, but now you have two feminines, you know? Yeah. Like what would you, do you think there's a way to naturally make that shift by like communication with your partner? I think you can only do it within yourself Mm -hmm. and your partner has to want to do the work. Right. They have to want to do the work. Like if he, if he doesn't want to do the work and he's going to stay in his feminine, you want to stay in your feminine. Like there's not going to be polarity. Mm Mm-hmm. And without polarity in a relationship, it's very hard to make a relationship work. Mm -hmm. Why do you think a lot of men, ooh, this is a little bit of a projection too. Why do you think a lot of men have a difficult time having hard or uncomfortable conversations with their partner? I think if someone has a hard time having a difficult conversation with their partner is because they are afraid of rejection. And they're afraid that by telling them their truth, then their partner will no longer love them. And maybe this person had their mother withdraw love from them because they said something to them at a very young age, said something to their mother, and all of a sudden the mother's like, well, I'm not going to love you anymore for doing this. And like it was very conditional love. 
So I think when a person is not willing to speak their truth in a relationship, it's because they're f- afraid of losing love and they're afraid of rejection. So the way in which you cure that is by speaking your truth. Like it's, you do the opposite of it. Do the opposite. Speak your truth, even as uncomfortable as it feels, even if your voice shakes, like it doesn't matter. Speak your truth in the relationship. Practice speaking your truth. And I'm telling you, it will help you a lot because it empowers you. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage her, there's a woman who asked that to ask for that. Yeah. Be direct. I need you to, to be honest with me right now. I need you to to show up i need you know like kind of like call upon the masculine energy would you feel that that would be some advice that like you feel aligned with yeah just like what is your truth about this whole situation yeah and if you see them kind of cowering away from it like don't let them waver in that moment like no like i really want to hear your truth what is your truth Mm -hmm. and just listen see what they say and if they fight against that would you just say maybe like take a look at the relationship like yeah. if you want depth and and someone's just not willing because i think everyone's able in some way shape or form but they have to be open to wanting to go deeper yeah I mean, you can only share. go as deep as you've met yourself mm-hmm. you know so if that person hasn't gone very deep within themselves they're not gonna go very deep within relationship right all right good one juicy one i think what is something that the feminine thinks is very attractive to the masculine but actually is not so what is something that the feminine thinks is very attractive to the masculine but is not? Um, well, give me an example of what, what you might think, and then I'll tell you if I think it's attractive. Um, I would say, I'm thinking of like misconceptions maybe, that a lot of women want to appear like they got all their, their shit together. Yeah, I think that's unattractive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of realized or like knew that you would say yeah. that. But I think a lot of women, like especially like music that we listen to, is like, you know, we're independent women and I don't need anybody. Yeah, and, yeah. And like I said, there's, there's, you can take care of yourself. Yes. We all are capable. But it's okay to receive help. It's okay. See what, I mean, from, from a masculine perspective, I find the softness, the gentleness, the radiance of a feminine woman, very beautiful. And when she's all like rigid and tense and like, you know, badass boss woman, you know, like I can be that myself. I wouldn't want that as a romantic partner, but I mean, as a friend, sure, whatever, companion, business partner, that's all great. But like in romantic sense, like when a woman's very like, you know, I'm all independent and I'm, it's to me, it's coming from very like, it's very masculine. Mm-hmm. So that that kind of depolarizes my attraction to that person if that's what they are. So I think a lot of women are forced into this role, like you were saying, independence. And I think that if you come off like you have everything figured it out and you don't need anything from anybody, he can't give you anything. He doesn't have a space. He doesn't have anywhere to give you anything. And the masculine energy wants to give. So if you don't allow the masculine energy to give and you don't allow yourself to receive – from the masculine energy then it's not very like attractive and don't get me wrong those of you listening you can run your own business and still be feminine i mean i do it yeah we're talking about relationships yeah you know like romantic relationships and yeah you can be an awesome businesswoman but like if you come home and you have a masculine partner and you're a feminine person I think it's important to get out of that Mm. masculine role that in your logic all the time and you know, get out of that and, and drop back into your feminine. And you should be dropping into your feminine throughout the day. Like, don't allow the masculine world, which is predominantly what we live in, which is, you know, very wounded most of the time, to dictate how you feel towards your feminine body. Right. Things like movement. Even breathing. Even though I know that, like, you know, a lot of masculine men, like, sit in stillness and breathe. But, like, I roll my shoulders and I breathe and I – or I touch my body and I breathe. And it kind of just reminds me, like, hey, there's a body. Get out of the brain. Yeah. You know, it's it's time to bring it back. And, and even Jake has been helpful just, like, noticing it in me and being like, get up. Let's dance. Get up. Spin around. Go do something else. Yeah. You know, like, what does it feel like for you? Like, when I'm in my masculine and, and you come – and like in the other room and you can feel that like what does that feel like to you for like women who are like I don't I don't understand you know like why can't I just why can't he just love me 24 7 you know because because women we we operate off of love like do I feel love right now so like it can get kind of confusing I think to a woman yeah I mean it doesn't matter if you're a woman if you're in your masculine it's it's the energy that you're carrying in that moment 
-hmm. So it's going to, it's going to depolarize to the other masculine energy. You know, like you can have two masculine people that are great friends, but there's no sexual polarity, you know? So I think that when you're in your masculine, be aware of it and just gently shift out of it back into your feminine, you know, don't get all caught up in this masculine grid. It's, it's, if you're a feminine person, that's not your core energy. It's not going to feel natural to your body anyway. It'll even cause pain over time. Mm Mm-hmm. I get like neck pain, yeah. sometimes back pain. Very rigid. If I've been sitting there for a long time. Yeah. And what do you say? Sometimes you're like, you have this look on your face. Yeah. Well, you get all stressed out. Yeah. I'm like, like real soft, focus. And soften I'm like, back Ugh. up. That's how I feel. Soften. That's my noise for how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to figure this out. And he's like, get up. <laughs> and that's good if you recognize it in your partner. I mean, I, yeah. I do. As long as they are open to you know your guidance in some way shape or form and you know like hey yeah but you also bring in like your feminine radiance to my masculine energy as well so like if i'm really in my mask and i'm really locked in and i'm like too rigid i mean yeah sure like if i'm in my masculine and i'm getting things done you know focus and whatever and you come in with your feminine gentleness and your softness like that's really soothing to my masculine core as well you feel like it's it helps pull you out of that a little bit yeah it's nourishing for so sure. rather than shaming which is a big yeah. thing it's like what are you doing you're not being nice you're this you're you know like that shaming them the masculine for being in the masculine yeah. yeah that's beautiful i actually really i like that sometimes i have to remember that and to be totally honest Oh, so let's see. Tips for a masculine man who wants to fully surrender to his higher self. He said, I find myself having a hard time of really letting go of that true control. Control of what? Your own ego? Mm. Good one. You know, like, yeah. what do you think you have control over? So we, we talked about this earlier, yeah. like giving up that control and surrendering to your higher self, whatever you want to call it, God, universe soul like whatever you want to call it something greater than just your own ego and allowing yourself to just surrender into that i think that if you're still clinging at control you're still very in like a a 3d level very earthly plane of existence and you're clinging for survival really because the ego is trying to survive the ego is trying to thrive like let that go let that control go all right last question is how can a feminine core woman handle interactions with a toxic toxic wounded masculine man now this isn't relationship this is just in life honestly just be in your truth stand in your light stand with the presence of god and just do not allow that into your space Mm -hmm. in the moment that you sense a toxic masculine man you set a strong boundary you speak your truth and you keep it moving you know because like the more you do that like the more women that truly like give up that need for validation from men and toxic masculine men, like you'll, you'll invite into your space a divine masculine man because you're not allowing this toxic masculine man who's abusive or narcissistic, whatever to, to clog up your energy field. So like the more you clean up your space, your energetic space by setting boundaries, speaking your truth and really being clear on what you want, you invite into what you do want. So the more you clean out what you do want, you create space for what you do want. Right. You know, like you got to let go of what you, what you don't want. So if you don't want a toxic mask of man, then let that go. And the next question I have for you is why are you having that come into your experience? So what parts of yourself are still toxic that need to be healed? Mm-hmm. You know, cause everything in this relate in this relationship to the universe is a mirror of our own consciousness. So look within yourself and ask yourself, what is this here to teach me? Why were they sent to me? And maybe it was to speak your truth and set boundaries and stop tolerating mm-hmm. the unconsciousness of the wounded masculine energy. Because when you ask for it, it's not like you just get it. You get the opportunities to display it. Yeah. Something like it happens all the time. It's like, I want more. I want love. But then like you had eight chances today to be loving <laughs> and you didn't take them. Yeah. The universe is like, hey, here you go. Well, we did it. Wow. I don't want to say 20 because it might have just been 30 with all, with, <laughs> with all the ones I rolled in there. Jake, I mean, the wisdom. I mean, I know it, obviously, but like, thank you so much for just sharing. And I know, I know that those people listening that maybe for some reason are unfamiliar with your work 
are going to hop on the Jake Woodard bandwagon because it's just the most amazing thing ever. Like you'll learn so much and there's so much around the masculine feminine energy and there's always something new. I feel like the way that you create your content is always, you know, you read your analogies and it makes you stop for a second and be like, huh, okay. And it's when you create that picture, I think it helps people better understand, yeah. you know, even the way, and I said it earlier when I was introducing you, like even the way that you just speak, like it's raw, but it's also really loving. So sometimes in life, you know, you have to be called out and, and that can like bang the ego and piss you off, but you're only pissed off because it's the truth. I mean, I've experienced it, just us having conversations and, and you hitting me with something, you know, hard and I'm like, damn it. Yes. But I, but you know, my ego's like fight against it, fight against it. So where can everybody check you out? What, what do you, what, what's the <laughs> plethora of amazingness that you have? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on your show. And I think I'm, I think I know I'm so proud of you for creating this, this amazing podcast. And I know it's benefiting so many people and so mm. many souls. Thank you for all your kind words as well. And all your recognition and admiration for my work and me as a soul. Um, you know, beyond that, if you want to connect to my work, I'm very uh, active on Instagram and I also have a podcast as well. The Awake with Jake show. If you haven't tuned into that yet, go subscribe to that. And I have a course on masculine and feminine energies. If you're still kind of confused about this stuff, you'd like to learn more, how to heal, harmonize, and embody your inner masculine and feminine energies. I have an online course with over eight hours of course material that includes video modules, training modules, guided meditations, embodiment worksheets, and all kinds of great stuff inside there. And as I told Melissa before we started the show here, I said, I'm going to give your listeners a $50 discount yes. to the course. And so if you go to jakewoodard.com forward slash course, you can go there, click checkout. And when you check out, use the code heart, H-E-A-R-T five zero. So heart 50 at checkout. And, uh, you know, that's in honor of your podcast. You hear that guys? How amazing <laughs> is that? And it's, I mean, I've gone through it and like I said, I mean, this is my love. So of course we, we <laughs> talk about this stuff all the time, but masculine feminine energy, not only is it super interesting, but it also really helps in every aspect of your life. I use it all day yeah. you know once you become aware of what you want to bring into the world as far as like your core energy then you figure out a lot about who you are and how you want to show up and what you want to call in and what you want to shove out and let go of you know yeah but that masculine feminine quiz too is that available that they it's on could... my website jakewitter.com okay because that's a good way to start it off like take the quiz kind of see what you get and then be like okay is this my truth? Is, does this line up? Is this really how I feel? And then as you travel through the course, you know, it'll bring up all these questions that will really clarify that for as you. As you travel through the cosmos. Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, when did I start this podcast? I don't know, maybe like sometime last year. And I've been going through with 50 something episodes, just me, myself and I chatting about stuff. And it's it's actually been and so dogs. and the dogs, of course. <laughs> but it's actually been so much fun to be able to like bounce back and forth in these these questions were amazing. And I, I hope that you found value in this. If you did, please share it, you know, because more people, I think the more people learn about the energy systems, again, like I was saying, the more they can really connect to their true essence and bring yeah. forth into the world who they really were, well, like what they were really meant to bring in. I agree. <laughs> Jake's probably tapped out now. I've had him here over an hour, but I'm grateful super grateful i like i said i couldn't i could not love you anymore and i think that your work is important and amazing and life-changing and i'm just happy that you agreed to come on the show and hang out <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me i love you as well <laughs>